Uh, welcome everyone. This is uh, episode 15 uh, with Professor uh, Fikri Abuzidan. We are talking about the fundamentals of research in medicine. And in this episode, uh, we will discuss about the fine tuning of our uh, manuscript, which is, uh, we discussed, you know, structure in the previous episodes. Uh, today, we will focus on a little bit more fine tuning about our manuscript. Yes, Prof, we are listening. Yeah, thank you, Arif. I mean, also, we go back to the simple things. Now you have the building in front of you. Andy. You have a building, not yet painted. The, the windows need a glass, uh, and so on. The doors need to have uh, Polish. uh, polishing, <laughs> and so on. So that is exactly the process of the fine editing. And the fine editing is very tedious. And you've been with me, Arif, with this. Sometimes it takes... 12 times, even more, 16th revision and revision and revision and revision to make it simple, easy, readable, transparent. So it is a very tedious work. And once you, you get the structure, initially you read the paper and you have the mental structure very clear. What do you mean by mental structure? I mean by mental structure is that the sections should read as a story in a logical thinking sequence. Once you reach that, then you go for the details. Then you go for the comma, simulcoma, word, language, simplifying the language, deleting uh, sentences, uh, repeating, uh, taking off the repetition, and sometimes even taking parts of the article if you think that they don't carry the, the flow of the message. And sometimes we might get papers of, I mean, PhD students, 16, 17 pages, and I, they get down to 10. With the same message, the same language, the same, I mean, but it's a different way. Now, the, the important thing here is you have really to write scientific medical language. People do not differentiate between fact and fiction. So what do we mean by that? This is not art writing. This is not a poetry. This is not a Shakespeare writing. It's a simple message that can be carried to people. And my mother tongue language is not English. It is actually Arabic. Despite that, you can carry the language in a simple way. Believe me, people will really understand what are you saying. And that's very, very, basically, languages should be short. I'll give you an example. You can say, this is a word, you say, uh, the experiment was done by our group. The experiment was done by our group. There were seven words. So you can see, we did the experiment. <laughs> we did this. It's the same meaning, and you know why this misconception actually was in the literature? Because people think if they just say we did the experiment, that is not objective, that is subjective. But that's the reality. It is objective to write it. This is called direct language. Using the indirect, they say, oh, the experiment was done by by our group. That is indirect, so it's more objective. But it's not. It's more complex. It's more and increasing the wording also. Yeah, increasing the wording. And that's, we did the experiment. I mean, that is simple. So you're recommending using the simple language? Yeah, it's called, it's now the new trend in scientific medical writing is to have the direct sentence, Sentences. not indirect. So be direct. That's the first thing. Secondly, you have to remove all ambiguous sentences. Let's just give you another example of, of, uh, of uh, uh, make it more straightforward. You can say road traffic collagen is a major cause of mortality, for example. You can, you can say road traffic collagen increases death in a simple way. Uh, or we have chosen uh, a, a researcher with a great, with a great experience called Sami. We have chosen a researcher with a great experience called Sami. Now, who has the great experience? Is it we who have the great experience or Sami has the great experience? So we can write it in a more clear way, like saying, we have chosen a researcher who has great experience called Sami. <laughs> so that is to remove the ambiguity. And I believe me, it takes sometimes 12 times in scientific writing 
Sometimes you read what your PhD student or your colleague has written. I don't understand what he means. And I ask him, what do you mean by this? Can you clarify this? Yeah. And the art for this is not to have connected sentences. If you have too much sentences, I find some people write three sentences to okay, when and where and so. a paragraph or something. Yeah. It, it is about three, four long lines and you don't know what is going on. So you write a short sentence and you put a dot. You write another short sentence and you put a dot. And write a third short sentence because this is the thinking process we do. So try to be short, try to be direct, try to be simple, try to be transparent. Okay? And you have really to think too much of what you have written. Believe me, once I wrote a letter to Nature in 1999 regarding my PhD, one page took from me about a week to go and reread because it was very sensitive. I read and read and read to make it really. The first draft was in maybe two, three hours, but how to write the words. And this reminds me of a quotation of a writer who says, I spend the whole day putting a a, 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 a dot, and then I spend the other day to remove it. I don't want them to, to, to be frightened, but believe me, sometimes we, we ask ourselves, shall I really separate this or shall I connect it? Okay? So that's that's like, like fine tuning. Now, ancient time, what does he say, Arif? He says that science is so simple if it's understood. <laughs> so if you see complexity in an article, this if you don't indicates, understand. indicates that the guy who's really, or the author, it doesn't understand what he says. This is, a, 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 it's just a complex. Or maybe he understood, but you know, it, it can, it's impossible to convey the message to the you know, wider you know, audience. Yeah, but the I, I can't, complex, yeah. but I, don't, I can tell you from experience as a reviewer, there are two types of papers that you have to be very, very, very careful. A paper which has a message, a great message, and the author cannot carry that. And believe me, one, one, one paper came from Cameroon related to motorcycle accidents. I spent eight hours giving recommendation for the author how to rewrite the paper. Because yeah. it's an important yeah. paper, very important paper about death in motorcycles. It would have saved a lot of life. But the, the science is good, but the communication was not good. The opposite are the tricky people. And these are really, I get frustrated from because they think they are clever. If they come to the hands of a good reviewer, they would recognize that they are covering a lot of weakness. They are, not, they are trying in some way to bluff too much for nothing. And you have as a reviewer to pick these. The language can cover the weakness. And the weakness and the strength can be covered by lack of language. You have to be, you have to understand that. And this is very, 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 very clear in the medical writing process. Uh, you have to be transparent, honest, honest. This is very important. The, the reviewers and the readers will love your honesty. We did this and we made that mistake because science has never is never complete Arif. So scientific writing should be transparent and honest. Now, once you finish the whole process in the editing and writing, sometimes comma, take this off, put that off, move that, you, you've seen And updating this. the references and everything, of course. Yeah. Yeah. After you do that, the paper is there. And I mean, I'm personally, I'm not an IT person. I, I don't use, I like to use the authors between brackets with the surname and year. Why is that? Because I move it. Yeah. I know that people Until use... Until the last, last revision, yeah. you know, revision. Yeah, yeah. Because in note, some people use the technicalities. But if there's a problem one day, and I've seen that, you will spend the whole day correcting the references. And it happened with us. The pro IT can fail. Yeah. So what I do usually, I advise people to put the, the surname and year and then move it up and down, then the sequence is not affected, yeah. and then put the sequence of references... Numbering at the end. At the end. Yeah. Now, if you are going to submit a paper, and we'll speak about that, you have to write as the structure of the paper. I mean, yeah. whatever they ask you, you follow exactly what they tell you. Now, very importantly, for example, once you write the legends to figures, each figure should be a separate unit. So the figure should be completely understood from the legend, not from the paper. Yeah. And our sequence of writing would have helped that. Yeah. 
because then you write the figure and its legend in a complete details, and then you write the uh, results section. Now, uh, what are the common mistakes? People actually sometimes mix the methods with the results or the results with the, with the discussion. Hmm. And you have to be careful that each of these is a separate section. Methods is what did I do? Results, what did I find? Discussion, what does it mean? And I find the common mistake that people really mix these together. A common mistake people do in writing, Arif, and this is in, in fine tuning, you, you have uh, to appreciate. They start repeating what's in the tables in detail. Let's say you have 10 variables in the yeah. table. They start repeating the same thing as if the table is not there. The results should not be a repetition of the tables. The results should be a summary in a simple way for the readers, so you highlight what's important. You don't need to go to so much details. The details of the numbers are in the table, anyway. the table right. and that makes the reading easy, and that makes it more fluent. So the, the other thing people, uh, I found a mistake for fine tuning, they present the abstract in a conference, and then they write the paper, and they have added more patients, and then the numbers, they, they use the old abstract. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen it many times, at least. So, check your numbers and the results section, of course, the abstract should fit exactly the same. And this is why the abstract should be written after. If you have written it for a conference, don't just cut and paste. You have to be sure that your results did not change. Because in the, 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 in the conferences, as we discussed, it's, kind of, it's a preliminary data. It's not a, a referred uh, literature and usually people write the abstract and they file last two three days and they submit it in a rush which is which is which may contradict with the with the, the chance of rejection of course. yeah the other thing also i advise for the fine tuning for the for the people is to have a clear name that they stick all their life like their surname their name surname i missed one paper like this and then i learned that i know some people struggle to get their papers in their life so the author names should be accurate. The affiliation should be accurate. Now, emails should be there. All of these are fine, fine tuning of a paper. Now, in, once you write a paper, Arif, you should use double space. And I li like to use font to, font to 12 times Roman. Why times Roman? Because, I mean, why this is space usually? Because it helps the reviewer not to be struggling. If you have a small font and they are one after another, the reviewers, most of the reviewers are old age like me, and so they will really get frustrated and this reflects bad on you. Make it double space, organize it in a nice way. And be surprised, Arif, once I look to the paper, a professional person who really is genuine about his paper, the appearance most of the time reflects the quality. Okay. Because someone who's keen about his research, he wants to present it in the best way. His figures are very good. His tables are really professional. The way he writes is good. The last thing I want to stress is that you have to understand that there is difference between opinion and fact. And this is why in, in the medical writing, I never use I believe, because belief is in religion or in political agenda. I think. Yeah. And then trying to stress possibilities as facts also is wrong. You can say it may be, it yeah. is possible, our results indicate, yeah. but you, just, you don't say it is. Yeah. And the other thing also in the writing, you should try to reduce the jargon. You can say, this computer is great. It is known that this computer is great. Why do you say it's known? This is called jargon. The computer is great. <laughs> or the, the sun is in the sky. It is known for all the human beings as the sun is in the sky. People do that in the writing. If they think, oh, this is the way it should be. This is art. It, has, it is nothing. Science is simple. The sun is in the sky. Finish. Done. Oh. And that's what, how I do it, and this is how you have practiced it with me. So I learned the hard way, Arif. I mean, sometimes, believe me, and this is my advice. Last advice, and then I think that... Uh, this no, no, I have questions. <laughs> yeah, you will ask questions. My advice for you is to keep your writing papers and... Uh, file them because you see I read sometimes the papers of the writing that to five I said my god did I write this I can't <laughs> believe that I've written that so uh, it's a learning process learning and you cannot learn swimming without going to the sea 
but try to see someone who can guide you through the swimming, a good coach. Yeah, the mentorship is really important. I agree. I agree. Prof, uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, the, uh, my observation actually with you, it's uh, uh, you like to really, you know, write the papers in the, the simplest possible way and shortest possible way. Yes. And uh, really, you don't want to, you know, submit any paper if it is more than 15, 16 pages. And you always wants to keep them 10, 15 pages range. Yeah, uh, so, uh, do you think really the length is really, really that matters? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I like to give the story and it will answer. My thesis was six papers, very high quality. And then shooting university, very high quality, it took a lot of hard work. And at the end, I have to write an abstract, which is one page. <laughs> Sorry. Imagine that I have to write a book in one page. That is what's the requirement for the thesis because it is, if you want to train people how to write, I ask them to write an abstract with a paper. And by the way, we are attending together as students, both of me and uh, you and me. <laughs> yes, and again. I workshop. I'm attending one. Yeah. And I have yesterday to write an abstract for my teacher to show me how to write an abstract. And you know what did Professor uh, Linkus told me? Oh my, he gave me a great advice. And I'm using that advice. This is why I'm doing this. He told me, Fikri, just think that you are experiencing think that you are speaking to your grandmother. What are you going to say? <laughs> and believe me, it's still the issue. I mean, why do we write Arif? To show that we write or you want the people to understand? So if you, I, I've seen papers, 30 pages print. Who is going to read that? I mean, I personally, if I'm going to read, I have 10 papers. I would select the good ones, maximum four printed pages. I like that. Yeah. And so I like the papers I like. I mean, one of the shortest papers I'm very proud of it's about the management of mesenteric vein thrombosis in Kuwait. It was published in European Journal of Vascular and Vascular Surgery, I think, maybe 1999, if I remember. It is only three, four pages, but it carries a lot of important messages. So, so with, with, with this knowledge, so uh, what do you recommend after the all fine-tuning finish? For example, introduction. Uh, you, you already said that things are yeah, one page. Yeah, I like this is my Arab. I mean, I don't want people to do that. They wouldn't do that. I mean, I like an introduction. This is my target. The target. double space. Uh, double space. If you can carry the aim, three quarters a page. Yeah. Methods has to be detailed. Yeah. And if you have done the methods, one of the sh to shorten the methods is to say we've done that. But I don't prefer that because it should be a separate. So methods should be detailed. Yeah. Methods can be three pages, four pages. You've seen that with me. Results, one to two pages maximum. With double space, again. With double space, yes, because the, the data is in the table. Tables and figures. You have to highlight for the people what to define. Yeah. Today, we did, we, are, we did a global study, just for to surprise you. We sat in the, in the coffee, Caribou coffee, or last hour on the weekend with my, with my PhD student, Yassin. He got me three pages results. I told them, Yassin, this is too much. <laughs> I'll sit down, I'll show you how to do that. You know how it went to one page and two lines. The really? same <laughs> message, the same message. I told him, did you learn how? He said, yes. I told him, this is the way how you should result. Think about the readers. Yeah. The readers, you have to think. I want to give the shortest, easiest, simplest yeah. message. And one page to one and a half page, two pages maximum. You see, sometimes, if the results are, we need to increase, we increase. But we don't try just to write. And I think one of the problems this student, the students get is from the PhD in different countries. I don't want to say which countries. They say, your thesis should not be less than, than uh, 30,000 words. But do you know that the DNA paper, which someone spent 20 years, and he got the prize, was only two pages. So <laughs> I think you judge. The quality, quality research, yeah. not by the number of words, number of messages, yeah. but what do they carry? So I think this is interesting because my son has, has been studying and he was struggling how many words he wants to put. And then this is against the scientific writing. Yeah. It's against the jargon. It's yeah. against simplicity. They start putting wording and the complexest things. Yeah. So be as short, as transparent. How about the discussion? So how do you recommend for discussion? Out of discussion, Sometimes I write it long only in one condition, if the results are negative. Yeah. 
It takes so negative results should be discussed more. Yeah. Yes, and there are limitations. And there is another paper I'm so proud of. It's highly cited, and maybe the students can go there. It's about very you know advanced trauma life support. Uh, there is a question I always question whether it's useful or not in, in in saving lives, and we did a systematic review, and uh, it was not. And now the, you go out to the limitations. The limitations are more the discussion. There was no methodologist except me. Either you should have two. We used one uh, midline only, and it should have been two. You know, so you, yeah. you just describe the limitations. You get honest in what you say. Believe me, this is very highly cited. And people citing it because it tells them a very important question. There is limitations in the methods. We discuss that transparent. So I, I, I advise the student to go into that uh, about advanced. It's in War Journal of uh, Surgery. Uh, does uh, ATLS improve uh, survival, if you train people on that? Because in medical education, the top, top important factor is really, does it change, change the, you know, the, the, the practice, clinical yeah. practice? Yeah. And that is uh, very important. So, again, I like to have short papers. Sometimes in the discussion, uh, I, you know, one of my papers, uh, which I really wrote a lot of discussion is in, in my PhD, it was negative. Yeah. And it was the best paper in my PhD. The positive ones are, were really, didn't carry the real message. I used a drug called lexipafen, and it was negative. And I discussed this is, drug is not useful. It turned out after 10 years that it's not useful. But it took me a lot of time to understand why my results are negative. Yeah. Maybe and that is was, the real it answer. Was, it was opposite to you know, the currently published literature. Yeah, yeah. And I, I remember I, have, uh, and I, I like to if you have a negative result, you have to prove for the people that your results are correct. Yeah. And usually people publish positive results. Yeah. And they, they dec decline negative results. Yeah. And that's why if you have a negative st study, you have to concentrate too much on the discussion, convincing, critically reading what's in the literature. And here is real effort if you want to get the paper. And I, I think I told you this story before with one of our our uh, residents who came with a negative paper about if a car is if someone is hit by by a car uh, whether it's a four wheel or a p p uh, small uh, yeah. uh, small car yeah. does it affect the results and it was negative and we had to discuss why it's negative and the paper was accepted in three weeks yeah. so in the, if the results are negative I advise people to critically read the literature and ask why my results are negative. Yeah. Not to change the results. That's completely yeah. un wrong. Un wrong and not the right way to do it. Okay, bro. Thank you very much. It's an amazing session again. And uh, thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Arif. And uh, I hope every, I mean, it is useful for the students. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arif.